Hello and welcome to Balderdash Academy. I'm your headmaster, Bob LeBlanc. Joining me is our faculty professor of STEAM, Nate Green. That's me this time. <laughs> <laughs> professor of Home Ec and Wellness, Marie Stewart Harmon. Greetings, friends and neighbors. Coach of the Balderdash Academy Dashers, Coach Steve Corning. Let's go, Dashers! Woof, woof. And our four-time reigning champion, oh, giving baby. Nate a run for his money, Professor of English Language Arts, Molly McGill. Who, me? How high? <laughs> <laughs> our visiting professor today is Amanda Eaton. Amanda is the producer and co-founder of You Should Smile More, the all-female improv group as well. As a rapper, actor, performer, cyclist, hiker, and member of the Chamber of Comedy, along with the rest of the founding faculty. They're good. She's also the collaborator with Art Save the Vote, where she's currently collaborating with artists, making videos to encourage people to vote. Amanda has agreed to be the scorekeeper tonight while our faculty com members compete for the coveted reigning champion banner as they do every show. <laughs> they will do their best. <laughs> they will do their best in a showdown of competitive comedy at the end of each. Amanda will assign points to the competitor she feels is most worthy. Once again, she is not looking for the correct answer. The odds of her finding the correct answer is rare. <laughs> She's looking for the best answer. The points are arbitrary and can be given to anyone at any time for any reason. At the end of the show, the faculty member with the highest point total will be named the reigning champion. Defending her title is four-time reigning champion, wow. Molly McGill. Unbelievable. Giddy up! It is time to hear from the champ herself. Our first pop quiz is from Professor Molly McGill of English Language Arts. What do you have for us, champ? Hey, faculty. It is just lovely to see you again. And welcome, visiting Professor Amanda Eaton. So nice to have you here. As you know, we usually kick this off with an English Language Arts pop quiz. I'm going to switch it up this this week Whoa. in uh, honor of having Amanda here. Okay. So instead of giving you a word to defend, to uh, define, not defend, well, you have to defend the definition. A word to defend? <laughs> but I'm going to play a game called Who Said That? So what am I going to do? I'm going to give you a, a, a quote from somebody of notoriety, and you are going to tell me who said the quote and uh, justify it. Amanda, you are going to listen to him. I'll recap at the end. You let me know which one you want to give points to. All right, faculty, are you ready to do this? Let's do it. Let's go. Yes. Let's go, Dashers. Okay. The quote is, I've never really wanted to go to Japan simply because I don't like eating fish. And I know that's very popular over there in Africa. Mm. <laughs> Once again, the quote is, I've never really wanted to go to Japan simply because I don't like eating fish. And I know that's very popular over there in Africa. Yeah. <laughs> Bob, what do you got? <laughs> I mean, it's obvious, isn't it? It's Godzilla. He's not very big on geolo uh, geography, geology either. Being a giant monstrous lizard, he hasn't had the education needed to really figure out where countries are. And frankly, it's the reason why he's so ill-tempered when he's in Japan. He hates Africa. He doesn't want to be in this enormous hot continent, not realizing he's on a relatively small temperate island in the North Pacific. It's not mm. his fault. He's a giant nuclear lizard. Cut him a break. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for that defense of Godzilla. Marie, Thank what you. do you got? Um, I, I hate to throw her under the bus like this, but Paris Hilton, um, she just never, she never really made it through geography class in high school. And um, this was this was when they were offering her a modeling campaign over in Japan. Um, and and she got really nervous and, and was like, I don't know, I, I'm on a I'm on like an all vegan diet. I don't know if I can accept the fish into my life and again. And so I'm Paris Hilton just doesn't really know her geography that well. Great. Thank you, Marie, for for Paris Hilton. Mm. Um, Nate, what do you have? Sorry, Paris. 
Uh, so this person is notarily known in the area as being our uh, notary republic uh, republic person, and it's uh, it's uh, Stephen McGonagall, and uh, he said that. Um, he, the weird thing is, is he was actually going to England, um, and uh, I don't know why he was bringing up that stuff, but yeah, our notary uh, person did that. That's great. Steve, that's, Steven that's notable. Thank you. Yeah. Steve. Uh, so not everyone knows this, obviously, but this is a famous quote from Frank Sinatra. Uh, most people think of him as having the smoothest voice of his time. And everyone knows his his uh, his music. Um, not everyone got a chance to see him live, unfortunately. Um, but there was a, a particular night he was performing in New York City um, and he kind of he kind of tried to do a little something, you know, like nowadays we have freestyle battles, but you know, there wasn't really happening back then so much, but he thought he'd go off the rails and try some new lyrics out. Um, and he said, you know, I don't really want to travel to Japan cause I don't really like fish that much. And he couldn't think of a rhyme. So he just said Africa. Um, and, uh, yeah. it almost okay. actually made it onto the record. It was a last minute cut. Great. I heard he Great. blessed Great. the rains while he was down there too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Frank, yeah, Frank Sinatra did that, yeah. Why wouldn't he? Okay, Amanda, we have Bob's Godzilla's uh, lack of geographical sense. We have uh, Marie's Paris panic attack. We mm -hmm. have Nate's Stephen McGonagall is pretty notable. And we, no, have, no Republic. we have Steve's smooth spitting Sinatra. <laughs> what do you got? Well, That's this cool. is a challenge, but first off, uh, Molly, I'm going to give you two sweet potato maki rolls. Uh, just Ooh. for coming oh! up with this question. Yes, thank you. I, I'm going to have to give Bob two points for the geography geology, because those are both very important <laughs> subjects that probably kids aren't learning right now mm -hmm. in school since there's no school. Uh, but I'm going to have to get up Marie the win for uh, four boxes of hair dye, uh, because I think <laughs> she was right with Paris Hilton. Yes, very, Maybe. very close. Congratulations to Marie. Uh, just to let Thank you guys you. know, you're yeah. all so like right on the money. Yes. You're so close. Really? It's kind of a no-brainer if you really think about it. It's Britney, bitches. It's oh! Britney Spears. <laughs> Does make sense. Another, yeah. another gem Almost from the pop Britney. princess herself. <laughs> And I thought oh, it was Jessica man. Simpson with this tuna. Very close. <laughs> All right. That's like the worst game of Clue ever. I thought it was so Jessica Simpson with a tuna. <laughs> <laughs> but it's Chicken Speak of the Sea. Chicken of the Sea. Speaking of those difficult, hard-hitting questions, it's now time for Minute or Less. So before we move on to our next game, I will spin an opening icebreaker question for Amanda from the Balderdash Randomizer. Ooh. The spin will generate a random question that Amanda will try to answer in one minute or less. These questions this. are hard hitting. They can be anything from work and play to general trivia. The icebreaker question is... This is one of the rough ones. What is your favorite sandwich? And why? Yes. Oh, okay. snap! Yes, let's go. Okay, well, my favorite sandwich is vegetarian. Because <laughs> I don't eat meat. So um, I'm a real fan of the Italian with none of the meat. So it's not really mm -hmm. an Italian. It's like a cheese sandwich with lettuce and pickles and onions and a little bit of oil and salt and pepper. Um, but I really just love veggie sandwiches with some hearty bread, maybe some seeds in there. They get them in your teeth. You got to pick them out. That's when you know it's a good sandwich. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Follow up. Have you tried a fennel and chili flake TVP Italian? No, but that sounds oh, delicious. It is amazing. <laughs> and a textured, textured vegetable, vegetable protein. protein. Whoa. Oh, Imagine whoa, going to Taco way. Bell and getting the perfect filler in a taco. It's TVP, right? So, <laughs> are you down with TPT? Yeah, you yeah, know me. Down with TVP. I will have the recipe in the description. So, how's oh, great. that? Yeah. Oh, great. All right. That's... Moving on. Our first game is called Four Questions. Amanda, 
is known as the rapper, her alter ego, Lady Minerva. In honor of our visiting professor, tonight's four questions will be about the goddess Minerva. Nice. Oh, great. Beautiful. Yep. Whichever one of our faculty members gives the best, not the correct, but the best answer, Amanda will award points. Our first question. Minerva is the Roman god of wisdom. She's the goddess of wisdom. Describe her symbol, Marie. What's her symbol? Um, uh, it is um, a brain. Um, and it has uh, golden flecks throughout all of the um, the parts of your brain that move, you know, like the little inside of the little wormy parts of your brain. It's a brain that's got golden flecks. It's my all answer. right. A brain with golden wrinkles. Nate, what's your answer? Yes. Uh, well, this has been debated for a little while. Uh, it goes back and forth. The consistency there is that it's on a dome. So hence wisdom is dome. Uh, dome and then mm. yeah and then it is either this is the part that people can't really agree on is either uh urine because people are taking a whiz on it or it's actually uh cheese whiz um mm. and uh i personally am on the urine train um <laughs> <laughs> so i believe that's, it is, that's a sample right there oh my god a dome All covered right. in urine so you're in the you're in the whiz dome, not the cheese whiz. Molly, what's your answer? Um, you guys are both very close, but I, I don't think you've been studying enough of your mythology. So what it actually is, it's one of those um, balls that you would put your hands on and the little pink and blue lights would go wherever your fingers are touching because that symbolized all the neurons firing in your head. Um, so it's beautiful pink and blue inside a dome. And then on top of that is a pair of glasses because everyone knows you're smarter when you put on glasses. All right. So a plasma glasses ball wearing speech. glasses. All right, Steve, what's your answer? Uh, so the symbol is a Philadelphia style cheese steak with provolone on top. Um, <clears throat> we, we all know <laughs> Nate's on the urine train. Uh, I am on the opposite train. Um, the poop? When you're going to Philadelphia and you're having a classic <laughs> cheese steak. <laughs> I gotta be careful what I say about being on the non-urine train. Um, there's two ways to have it, obviously. There's provolone and there's cheese whiz, right? Um, now, Minerva was the goddess of provolone cheese, wisdom, right? And how she got the whiz dumb was she saying cheese whiz dumb. Why would you put that on a sandwich? Provolone <laughs> cheese all the way. Let's go. All right. Oh, wow. So the goddess wow. of wisdom, provolone cheese. So what Steve's saying is if you can't go with number one, go with number two. <laughs> no! So <that's> <laughs> our, our answers are we have Marie with a brain with golden flecks in the, and I quote, wormy bits. We have <laughs> Nate. Inside the wormy bits. <laughs> Nate, it's a whiz dome and he's on the urine train. Molly... <laughs> Plays with balls of plasma with glasses. And Steve is uh, all about the cheese steak goddess. Mm -hmm. The answer, you're all very close. Those were all answers. You are. That's yeah, why I have to award you all points again. Um, this oh, time, right. Marie, you're getting one point because the gold flex, yes. I feel like the gold, it's just very inspiring. Um, Steve, you get two points because I did have a cheese steak once. And I did go number two immediately. <laughs> um, you are going to get three points because the plasma ball that you were talking about, yes, generates a lot of electricity and just is very inspiring. Um, but for 10 points, we're going with Nate because um, I pee a lot. So that's 10 <laughs> points. <laughs> Ten Much points. like Ozzy Osbourne, I'm going crazy on this urine train. So... <laughs> The actual answer, the actual answer was this is her symbol is an owl. Uh, cool. Who? Her exactly. Our <laughs> next question. Oldie but a goodie. <laughs> so while in a weaving competition with a mortal woman, she did what to her competitor, Nate? She unfollowed her on all of the social media accounts. <laughs> uh, <laughs> 
<laughs> and immediately she was a goddess. So immediately everybody followed suit and nobody followed her. It was it was like a shunning. All right, unfollowed her on the web, they Molly. Followed by unfollowed. Oh, wow. God, I'm glad you came to me. Um, what she did to this mortal weaver was she just she laid it down. She's like, "Look, you are doing it wrong. I know things, wisdom. So let me show you how it's really done." She threw. She cast her weaving aside. She got down on the ground. She did the worm to show her how weaving is really done. And the mortal then became the best weaver, you know, in town, uh, thanks to uh, Lady Minerva. All right, so a looming hoedown. Steve, what's your answer? Uh, she did this move, um, you guys have probably heard of this, it's called the sand snake. Um, first, sand to the eyes, and then second, snake down the dress. Two part, and it'll distract anyone, and you'll be able to outweave also, them. That's worst dirty. move to do that on a first dirty. date. Yep. <laughs> that I wouldn't recommend it, but <laughs> from experience. So, Steve with the sand snake. Marie, what's your answer? Um, she she saw something within this mortal woman. She looked deep into her eyes and into her soul, and she realized that this mortal should really also be immortal. So she made her competitor also immortal, but in that process, there was like a long laying down that the mortal woman had to do. So inherently, Minerva won. Mm -hmm. But in turn, she made her competitor immortal. Hmm. She killed it by not killing. Speaking of interns, yeah, how's Alan doing? Has anyone heard from him recently? Yeah, Alan's doing fine, <laughs> okay, Nikki. Great. He's in the basement typing away on the next episode. So, <laughs> so we have four answers, two of which, believe it or not, was actually slightly adjacent to the truth. <laughs> okay. Laying so we down. have Nate. <laughs> Nate unfollowed her on the web. Molly looming hoedown. Steve with a sand snake. And Marie made her immortal. The real answer, she turned her competitor who you might have heard of as the human woman Arachne into a spider, mm -hmm. giving the entire family its name forever. So you got wow. Nate with the web Arachnids. and you, yeah. you have uh, Marie with Immortal, the Arachnids named after Arachne. Amanda, how would you like to score? You guys make it so hard because you're all very intelligent. Um, <laughs> That's what we're known we know for. We know a lot of stuff. It, it's hard to pick a, a winner on these things. Um, so, Bob, I'm going to give you five points because uh, you're wearing that suit and sweating your booty off. Oh, <laughs> thank you. I'm going to take a drink of water for that. <laughs> Any other? Or are you all set with a five? No pressure. It's up to you. It's your points. I yeah. just love you all, so I, I want to give you all points all the time. Um, but the one that <laughs> laughed the loudest, uh, Nate, unfollowing on social media. Mm. So, yeah. Um, yeah. I'm gonna give. I'm gonna give you a seven point. Thank you. Whoa, Ooh, seven big. points. That's huge. I appreciate all right. that. You didn't need to, and I hear you. You bedmoed me just a second ago. It's true. <laughs> <laughs> it was private, though. I didn't make it public. But. How much? How much? Do you, how much was it, Nate? Because uh, you know I could use seven points. So seven dollars. <laughs> oh, seven one dollar per point. That's it's decent. I, point. Yeah, I can stop handle stop right. <laughs> Our next question. One of uh, one of Minerva's names is Minerva Lucinia, which means nightingale. Why? Why is she known as the Nightingale Molly? Oh, uh, it's actually because there's a really deep, famous uh, historical story about her <laughs> fooling. Is so Molly? Yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> you should be. T t pull a seat. Um, <laughs> she was trying to trick this uh, local guy away from her gal, mm -hmm. his gal, and so she pretended to be a woman named Gail. And she wore the sexy slinky nighty. And she ended up, I mean, it's a long story. I have long story short. She ended up stealing the guy from the woman, but then lost him once she took off the nighty. It's a big deal. So, anyways, Nightingale. 
All right, Nightingale, because she used enough words to think of a story to explain why she's <laughs> called Nightingale. Steve, what's your answer? <laughs> uh, so they, they call her Nightingale. Uh, Nightingale is a, is a bird, of course, at, that comes out at night and it has the word night in the name. They, they called her this because she was really, really good at sleeping. Um, she was just one of those people that had a natural uh, brain chemistry that was ready to sleep at a certain time. She would lay down, be asleep, sleep uh, restfully throughout the entire night, about seven to eight hours. And she would wake up ready to start the day, never had a problem, never needed to pop a melatonin, anything like that. She was just the perfect sleeper. That's why they called her the Nightingale. The perfect sleeper. Marie, mm -hmm. what's your answer? Um, so... In the time, the women were not as um, open with their own sexuality, and it was very frowned upon if a woman was to sleep around, say. Um, and when a woman is loose, um, they 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 might name her Lucine Lucinia, um, but but. <laughs> However, um, the the uh, the locals could not pronounce that perhaps the same way I could not, and uh, instead <laughs> they could say Nightingale because she was just strutting around at night, mm. um, and uh, and so it was a slightly more appropriate term of the time while still calling her a loose woman. Poor poor, poor Minerva, she did not deserve that. You're, you're, yeah, I definitely, I completely understand. Typically, they called women like that in Rome priestesses. Nate, what's your answer? <laughs> so, um, what this is is, uh, she was she was doing something which eventually led to the nickname, and then she embraced it. So, what she was doing is she was running around, and because she was a goddess, she could run really fast. Um, and she just ran around with a sword. She was knighting everybody. She's like, "You're a sir. You're a sir. You're a <laughs> female sir." And so she she was going at the speed of gale force winds, knighting everyone, and everybody just called her Nightingale. Yes. Um, and then she embraced it, and then instead of saying, you're a sir, she started saying, boom, Nightingale, boom, Nightingale, boom, Nightingale. That's how she got it. <laughs> All right, so a serial nighter. So we have four answers. They are Molly stole a nighty from Gale, Steve slept a lot, Marie, she was strutting around at night, and Nate was a serial <laughs> nighter. All very good answers. The real answer is that in Roman mythology, Minerva invented the flute. And the myth is, she didn't like the way her cheeks puffed up when she played it. She threw it by a river, and the satyr found it. So, Amanda, how would you like huh. to score? Oof. Um, well, I think that we're going to go with five points to Molly, um, because I myself have lost some lovers when I've taken off my nighty. Mm. <laughs> it's tough. We're also going to give five points to Marie, um, because I, I do believe the loose women and uh, going with th that name. Um, yeah. Yeah, I'm going to give it to the ladies this time. Equal. Thank you. Her, you nice. All right. Great too. Yeah. Not Thank you. Great points. Okay, so our last question in four questions. Featured in public and government artwork like Our Lady of Victories in Monument Square, Portland, or uh, the Pioneer Monument in San Francisco, Minerva can also be found on what West Coast icon? So Minerva can also be found on what West Coast icon? Steve... All right, so let me paint a picture for you guys for just a minute here. Um, so there's an amusement park uh, called Six Flags Magic Mountain, and it's it's home to a ride called Superman, which is the largest ride of its kind. It's not really saying that much, but it's very tall. I think it's, <laughs> it's, I think it's almost 400 feet, okay, without getting too nerdy. Um, but that, you know, it's too obviously late, an Steve. icon of <laughs> California. I'm like, look at the color right now. Look at the color of me. It's crazy. I've gone into <laughs> thanks, sapia tone. Thanks, Christopher Walken. Mid, like, well, look at this. What is happening? It's crazy. I, th I think I think you just got a little distracted there. <laughs> I was trying to paint. No, I was talking, thinking about painting a picture and then realized that I am yeah. literally just black and white here. 
So, hey, Steve, um, West Coast icon. Remember, this is a song about a West Coast icon. Oh, so, I'm sorry, what? <laughs> what was that, Bob? Uh, it's a reference to Alice's restaurant. Oh, okay. So, <laughs> <laughs> did I answer your Getting question or did I stop midway <laughs> noticing well, how sapia tone I was? Let me, let me, l- let me check the record. <laughs> okay. Six Flag Magic Mountain Damn, I look pale. <laughs> hey, that's it. Good answer. I think that's it. Yeah. Good <laughs> All right. Good let's go answer. With that. I'm not going to win anyway, so let's just go with that. Marie, what do you have? <laughs> um, it's on the library of UC Berkeley. Um, they, When they were building, when the architect was coming in to build the library there, they really wanted to like impart knowledge and wisdom to the students when they come into the library. So um, the, the library at the University of California in Berkeley. Great answer. Nate, what's your uh, what's your answer? Uh, it is on all of the signs of uh, In-N-Out Burgers because they're open <laughs> nightly for all those nut owls. <laughs> all right, all the signs for the In-N-Out Burger. Molly, what's your answer? It's actually on the most popular mode of transportation over there on the West Coast, from running from the top of the West Coast down to the South. It is, of course, on every single airstream driving up and down the coast of the West Coast. Um, it's mandatory. You have to have it on the back in some way. It could be a small insignia. Yeah. It could be the entire thing, but it is mandatory. It's kind of like mm-hmm. a makes tramp a lot stamp of sense. So motorhome, tramp stamp yeah. for your motorhome. That's it, so, baby. We have from cool. Steve Six Flags Magic Mountain Paleness. We have Marie it was upon a Library. Roller coaster. I will say, you check the Alan's gonna go back in reverse. I did mention a roller coaster, <laughs> it was atop that before. Flashback. So there's an amusement park uh, called Six Flags Magic Mountain, and it's it's home to a ride called Superman, which is the largest ride of its kind. It's not really saying that much. This has been a Balderdash Academy flashback. You did. You did. And you mentioned, I believe, Superman, which is the <laughs> tallest roller coaster of its oh kind. Which is you totally insane. blacked out. I can't even, out. Myself, right? <laughs> can't um, even remember you. what you were saying. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, next, we have Marie with a library of UC Berkeley, which is likely correct. Minerva is featured on almost every library because the goddess of wisdom. You have Nate on all of the signs for in and out and Molly, Mm. it's a law. It needs to be on every airstream. Good, good answers. The real answer was Minerva is featured on the state seal of California. And the reason is because much like the state of California, she emerged fully formed. Hmm. Hey now. Just like me. Hey now. Ouch. All right. Yeah. So. I had hair and everything. Ow. Um, that does not surprise me. <laughs> and you haven't oh, grown God. much since. Amanda, how would you like to score? <laughs> um, well, we're going to give Steve one point because Beautiful. you turned all pale when you were mentioning <laughs> roller coasters. And that's what happens to me when I go on roller coasters. So one point for you. <laughs> <laughs> um, we're going to give Molly two points because I think that's creative and, you know, just, I, I like it that, that, that they should have require that on your airstream. Right. Yeah. We're going to give Nate, uh, three points because in and out burger, and I'm sure it's going in and out of your system real quick. Uh, and I like that a lot. Like and an we're going to give uh, Marie five points because I think that is pretty truthful. All right. I will so, find out. <laughs> <laughs> Our points are in last place. We have Steve with three points. Next, we have Molly with nine. You have myself with 10. Beautiful. Wow. I'm, I'm slaying it over here. Marie with 15. <laughs> and in the lead is Nate with 20. Wow. Shocker. Wow. Shocker. <laughs> Freaking shocker. Okay. Oh, shocker says the person with four wins under their belt. Mm-hmm. <laughs> says the way. guy with five wins under his belt. Under his belt. <laughs> exactly. Mundo. Well, I didn't Am say I too pale? Join us. The problem? <laughs> Join Steve. us for a talk oh with producer, rapper, actor, performer, improviser, hiker, cyclist, many other things Amanda Eaton when we return to Balderdash Academy. Go Dashers! Steve, this is why we're losing on the sports teams because you're too concerned about your paleness. I 
<laughs> guys, literally, I look like I'm in sepia tone right now. What is going on? For complete episodes and more, visit us at balderdashacademy.com. Oh, doggies. This interview with Amanda Eaton has it all. It has Chicago. Julia Cameron's The Artist's Way. Nature. A guy named Art. People smiling more and, wait for it, chapstick. Don't miss the next part of episode 13, only on Boulder Dash Academy. Thank you for watching. Remember to like, subscribe, and hit that bell icon. You can find us on your favorite podcast service as Balderdash Academy. Go Dashers!